before we start that, um, number facts and operations basically is what I want to talk about today and then next week we'll look at problem solving because if you don't know your number facts and you don't know how to work your operations, problem solving is a bit of a waste of time really. So we'll look at that and um, then if you've got any questions, as Ruth said, please ask. Okay, number facts are very important. If you can't add up, take away, multiply and divide and know your number facts, well, you, the kids, then you can't get very far and you need to know them like that straight away. And we've, I think by about the end of year three, we expect all of our students to know their number facts, all operations, up to 10 plus 10, even 12 plus 12, 12 multiplied by 12, etc. 144 divided by 12, and so on. And the old style of saying them, parroting them, just straight through, up and down, in and out, round about, is pretty much the only way to learn them, or the best way. And um, then practicing them, talking about them, doing little games. I was talking to a parent just before the holidays, and uh, she was talking about using dominoes, and I said, that's a great thing to do, but then you make your own, because dominoes only go up to six plus six. So make a new set of dominoes up to 12 plus 12, and then you can add them, you can multiply them, and things like that. Um, one of the things that it's useful for your kids to know are the things that we call fact families. So in other words, if you know one number fact, you actually automatically know four. So such as two plus three is, we all said, five. Oh, very good. <laughs> If you know that, you also know the turnaround, which is three plus two. Well done. But if you know that, you also know the takeaway version. So you start with five, take away one of those, two, and the answer is the other one, three. And if you know that, you also know the turnaround version of that. Take away the other one. And you know the one that was left behind. So, 2 plus 3, doesn't matter whether you start with 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2. You know that one. You still need to learn all of those, but in terms of understanding and in case they forget, you know one, you know four automatically. It works with multiplication as well. Yes? Done. So therefore, we also know, which is 6, we also know 6 divided by, choose one, and 6 divided by the other one, which is 2. So can I ask a hard question? Yes. How do you stop them doing 2 take away 5 equals 3? Because that, you know, if we're showing them the numbers, how do we cement the concept at home so that they are not just randomly putting the numbers anywhere and going, well, that's the turnaround? Well, you could do it with, um, I'll use two pens. All right, two. Can you take away five pens? No. Well, then that's not, the, then it can't work that way, okay. can it? So, to, so go to you a have concrete, to start with, concrete. You, that's, go to a concrete example. Yes. Anything that you want to do can often, maybe not always, but often start with a concrete example. And so you could also say, well, okay, you start with, if you've got this one, start with the answer. If you want to do your takeaway or your division, it works the same way with division. Start with your answer and then go backwards from there. All right? So when you've got your adding up, switch these around. Then, to do the opposite operation, and our operations work in pairs, addition, the opposite is subtraction, multiplication, the opposite is division, 
So once we've got our two pairs of multiplication, then we look at the opposite. And where do we start with the opposite? At the end and work backwards. So start with the answer, in this case 5. You can do your concrete operation as well, or your concrete example as I just did. But the, eventually we've got to move on to the theory so that we no longer need the concrete examples because if the kids are in class and they have to do an operation that involves 5 take away 2 or whatever, they can't always, in maybe prep and 1, they might for a while, but eventually, certainly in year 5 or year 3, as Mrs Hayward teaches year 3, they can't be always getting their little counters out and fiddling around. They have to get to the point where they just automatically know it. So, when you're doing the opposite operation, start at the end and work backwards. Start with the answer and work backwards. Okay, did that answer the question? Okay, so whatever works for you, um, 2 plus 3, so use the, the sets of number facts, so adding on 2, so 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4, 2 plus 5, 2 plus 6, etc, etc, and then you 3 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 3 plus 4, 2 multiplied by 3, 2 multiplied by 4, 2 by 5, 2 by 6, etc, all the way up and down the tables, and then mix them up, test them, mix them up, do it in the, in the sets of the twos, the threes, the fours, whatever, and then start mixing them up. Okay? All right, let's... Just yeah? Are there any good apps that you can buy? Uh, there are. I'm the wrong person to ask about <laughs> apps, but we can certainly... Because I know there's a good spelling one that's been very helpful. Yeah. We'll, we'll Mrs. Hayward, can you make some you. notes about yeah. these sorts of questions that we need to ask? To our, our app guru is, is Jodie Blackwell. We'll, we'll um, ask her about that. She's not, uh, not here today. She's sick, but we'll certainly see if we can find out something like that for next week even. I've got some homework. We've all got some homework now. Mm -hmm. Teachers don't like getting homework. <laughs> we don't give it. That's what we're supposed That's part of our, our job. All right. That's number facts. The next thing we need to think about is operations. If we don't know these, we can't do our operations. So operations, there are, I suppose, three ways of doing a, an operation. And an operation is just the four basic things that we do with numbers. Adding up, taking away, multiplying, dividing. They're all the four operations. And we can do that using the written algorithm. Which was probably what uh, those of us of my generation, you're too young for that, would, have, would be the only thing that we ever did at school. Then there's using a mental strategy. probably worked out for ourselves and didn't really realise that that's what we were doing, but we've just sort of done it. And then there's using a calculator. Now, I usually say to my students, you can use the calculator in your hand or you can use the one between your ears. Um, it takes them a while sometimes to work out what that means, but eventually they know what that means. Mathematics, if you go into the demonstration module, you'll find times tables tunes, T O O N S. And then for practicing your number facts, level one on Mathematics Live is just up to 10. So that's
that's that being a, a speed thing um, that helps the kids to practice and the numbers so um, they're always very useful just doing a bit of level one of mathematics or even level two when they start doing two digit numbers for number facts practice okay calculator now a lot of people get very twitchy when when uh, people talk about doing maths using calculators. Um, they are useful. They're not the only thing that we use, but they are a tool that we use for maths. And there are times when a calculator is useful, and there are times when the one between your ears is much more useful. And I've, I've uh, had times in my classes where we've had races. We've had two students. You've got a calculator, you've got to use your brain. Two plus three, you'll answer five straight away before you've even hit the two on your calculator. But if I said 3,497 multiplied by 864, who's going to win? The calculator, unless we've got a mathematical genius. <laughs> okay, so there are times when a calculator is useful. There are times when it's a bit of a waste of time so long as you know your number facts. The written algorithm and the mental strategy, we use those. Mental strategy, when we want to do something, work out something fairly quickly, but accurately, and we're not, well, we either haven't got access to a calculator or the phone or whatever, or a piece of paper, and we just want to do it fairly quickly. If you're in a shopping centre and you want to work out how much grocery bill is, got two or three items and you left your phone in the car, the only thing you've got is your head and then you need to know how to do it fairly quickly and accurately. So some of the strategies that we use, look at this, and these are the ones that I've actually got on the notes, for adding up, such as using place value. So for adding, adding, using place value, such as and if we were doing something like that, if we were doing the written algorithm, we start with the smallest place value, the one over that side. Often, if you think about it, Often, when we're using a mental strategy, we'll start at the opposite end. We'll start with the hundreds. So we'll do 300 plus 200. And then we'll do the 60 plus the 70. And then we'll do the 4 plus the 9. We might even do 364 plus the 200. And then we'll do the 564 plus the 70. And then whatever that comes to, plus the 9. Is that the way some of you, I can see a few heads nodding. That's probably the way a lot of us would do it. Or we can do that and then turn out up what we get from there. That's the place value one. Once you get to larger numbers and too many of them, the mental strategy doesn't necessarily work so well. Another one is using a number line. And I find that number lines can be useful where you've got you know, 364 and then you're using your relative position on a number line and ending up with an answer. I do find though that the brighter students, the, the ones that I mostly teach, the brighter students find a number line a bit of, of tedious. They don't tend to like it. I'm not quite sure why, maybe because it is a bit tedious. They want to just get into it. In fact, the brighter students find having to explain everything a real pain in the neck. I see some heads nodding here too. They think, well, I've got the answer. Why do I have to tell you how I got it? But that's what is required these days. We have to show everybody what is going on. And so we just have to explain. And they just have to do it. Another example of mental strategy 
is rounding and adjusting. Okay, excuse my beautiful handwriting. Now this is the one that you would probably be most, com uh, most familiar with in the shopping centre. You buy three items and they cost $3.99 each. What are you going to do? 399 multiplied by 3, now 327, no? Now what are you going to do? Round it up to 4, multiply by 3, we get 12, but then what? I mean I know when we get to the checkout we're going to have to pay $12, but uh, <laughs> let's just suppose you're going to pay by credit card where they still take a the extra little cents into account. So, what do we have to do? We have to take the three cents off. Why three cents? Uh, they're thinking. They're thinking. We added one extra cent on, so it's one extra cent three times that we added on. Now, this is what we're going to have to remember. This is where some of the students get comp get confused. Rounding and adjusting is a strategy for adding. It's also a strategy for taking away. We'll have a look at that. Well, we might as well have a look at that now. If we're adding, so that was, we are multiplying. Why did we decide to multiply when we're actually doing a strategy for adding? Because we've got three of them. So a quick way of adding a series of numbers that are exactly the same is multiplying. Okay. We could do it if it was uh, 399 and 298. Two items. What would we do there? We'd round that one to four dollars. We'd round that one to three dollars. That gives us a total of seven. But again, we have to adjust the extra three cents. One there two there, so that's an extra three cents, and we take away the three cents. Now, the reason we take it away is, even though this is an addition operation, the reason why we take it away at the end is because when we round it, we added them on. So we've got too many. So when you've got too many, you've got to take them away. But, when we have something like, uh, what do we have? I've already got it written out, so why do I need to think again? When we've got some numbers like, uh, rounding at 84, take away 29. Alright, that sounds like a good one. 84, take away 29. Now I'm going to adjust, or round, this to 30. Which means I have 54. Now, am I going to take off that extra one or am I going to add it on? And why? Well, when I took the 30 away, I took one more away than I should have. So if I've taken one more away than I should have, what am I going to have to do to make up for it? Give it back. What operation do I do to give it back? I add on. So the answer is 55. And this is where some students will get confused. They'll think, oh, well, I, I took away. They can understand taking it away at the end when they're adding here. So then they go, well, I take away my extra bits when I add using the rounding and adjusting so I must have to take it away again over here forgetting that that means they've actually taken away twice so you need to think about what have I done when I rounded and took away or added have I now got too many which means I have to give back or do I not have enough and I have to add it on. 
And that's where you've got to think about what you're doing. All right, the other adding up strategy is using compatible pairs. Have you ever seen a list of numbers like this? Are you going to add them in that order? Or are you going to do something like this? And then add on the nine. Yeah, I can see some heads nodding. Why do we do that? Because it's easier. Why is it easier? Because any time you use numbers that are, well, we call them round numbers, don't we? I don't know why we call them round numbers, maybe because zero is a round shape. But it comes to a 10 and a 10 there. They're much easier to deal with. So, we'll add that, then we'll add that, and we'll get 20, and then we'll add on the 9 at the end. Don't get confused when you do something like that and, and get muddled and, and lose your place, but but that's the strategy called using compatible pairs. It works with things like um, we're going to add that in order. That we'll add the 25 and the 75 first, and then we'll add on the 27 at the end. Probably those sorts of, all of these strategies are ones that we've been doing all the time. And uh, we probably just didn't realise that that's what we were doing. Okay, taking away, fairly similar to the adding, where we use the place value, we use the number line, except with the number line when you're adding, when you're adding, you're getting bigger. So you start here and move forward. When you're taking away, you're getting smaller, so you start there, go backwards. Again, the opposite of one operation means the turn around, go backwards. So if I started off taking away, and I wanted to add up and turn around, this way. So if you're going to reverse the operation, you reverse the direction, you're working backwards. Okay, so both of those using place value, using the number line, rounding and adjusting, we've also talked about. And the other, the last um, adding up, uh, taking away strategy that I wanted to talk about is the counting on. Now, in the days before computerised cash registers, if any of you, those who are None of you are, there, are my vintage, but when I was at high school I used to spend my holidays working at Coles and Woolworths and so on, and uh, in the days when you, all you had was a cash register that told you how much the total cost was, didn't give you any idea of how much the change was, so the cost might have been $17.15, and the customer gives you a $50 note. So I'm not going to sit there and think, $17.15, yeah, let's um, take that away from $50. Oh, I can't do that. That's too hard. So what do I do? What do we do? We count on from the $17.15, and I pick up a five-cent piece. In those days, it would have been ones and twos, but never mind. Uh, pick up a five-cent piece to make it $15.20. And then I'll go to, in some form or another, I'll end up getting to uh, 17.50 and then I'll get another 50 cent to get me to 18 and I'll gradually work up the scale until I get to my $50 and I just pick up those coins. That counting on is probably the best strategy for working with money and working with money, saying the same thing backwards, working with money is probably the best use for this counting on strategy. All right? We've probably all done that too, when we haven't got access to a computerised cash register or our calculator. We have to use the one up here. So counting on is 
because it's the opposite of adding, we start with this amount, we have to end up there, so we're just counting on a little bit like a number line, but instead of using the actual number line, we're using concrete materials, i.e. coins and notes. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, when I learned to subtract and do the equations, we always did like 18 minus 3, with 18 up the top and 3 under it. And uh, now yeah. it seems to be going across in a line. Yeah. What you're talking about, this, this is all using mental strategies. Right. What you're talking about is the written algorithm, which you better hurry. You can get to the written algorithm, which is. In terms of, of how we mark these sorts of things and the, what we consider is important, written algorithm is a very basic sort of um, strategy to use. So if you get that, you're given one mark for each question. If you are asked to provide a mental strategy and our students are asked if they're doing a mental, working something out using a mental strategy. They have to actually show their thinking or show their working in some form. And it's not the written algorithm form, it's one of the forms that I've done so far. That then is worth two marks because it's actually a different form of thinking, a higher order of thinking. So if, if it's doing a higher order of thinking, then it's worth more marks. So they get two marks for that. <coughs> One, to show that they've been able to show what's going on in their head. And the second mark is if they actually get it right. Okay? <coughs> so, multiplication. There are, I'm running out of board space here. There are three basic ways of using a mental strategy for multiplication. I knew I shouldn't have used the black pen. One is using factors. For instance, you could do something like that. Factors could be five nines, 45, split it up into the, the numbers. Do you want to know what I mean by factors? Two numbers which when multiplied together give you another number. So 45, and this again is where your number facts come into play. Five nines are 45. So it might be easier to work out nine nines are 81 and then multiply by five. Multiplying by five is a lot easier than multiplying by nine. Using factors is one method. Doubling and halving is another one. So, for instance, a number like... Uh, 35 multiplied by 16. If I double that one... 35 and halve that one, I did 16 divided by 2, have I changed the value in any way? I've multiplied this one by 2 and to make up for that, I've divided that one by 2 and then I'm going to multiply that together. So the 
beauty of this particular set of numbers is, if I multiply that, I get 70, and then multiply that by 8, that's a lot easier than 35 multiplied by 16, isn't it? 70 multiplied by 8. That won't work with a number like that, or a set of numbers like that. Why not? You can double one of them, but can you halve the other one? Well, you can, but is it going to be of any use? You're not benefiting at anything. You're actually making it harder for yourself. So doubling and halving will only work if one number can be halved. And sometimes it might not be of any great benefit. I mean, if I had 36 multiplied by 16, that might be all right. I could end up with 72 multiplied by 8. That might be all right. It's very helpful if you're going to end up with a number with a zero on the end. Okay, and then you've got the old place value one, where we've got 49 multiplied by 7. Well, that's 40 multiplied by 7 and 9 multiplied by 7. And that's where the... Oops, I rubbed it off. That particular strategy using place value is the one that heads to the written algorithm because that's, that's what the written algorithm actually is. 49 multiplied by 7, 7 nines. And then 7 multiplied by the 40. But if you're doing it as a mental strategy, it doesn't matter whether you do 7 nines first or 7 40s, it doesn't really matter. But that's the strategy. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with some of the students, they do get a little bit confused. This one and that one. They sometimes confuse using factors and using place value. So they have to be aware that sometimes I say to them, particularly for my year five students, if you're using factors, it's multiply, multiply, multiply. If you're using place value, it's multiply, multiply, then add your answers. Multiply, multiply, multiply for factors, multiply, multiply, add for place value. Sometimes they just have to remember these things. Now, dividing. Particularly the place value one. Miss Harris, can you just um, do the 49 times 7 and show us, do you do the carrying? Where do you place oh, that? Can okay. you just play that out for us? 49 times 7, and let's do a bit more. 249 multiplied by 7. What I like to do particularly when you start adding a few more digits in the number that you're multiplying by. I say 7, 9 to 63, so that's the 6 there and the 3 in the 1's place. Then 7 4's, they happen to be 10's, these are 6 10's, that's 4 10's. 7 4's are 28, and my extra 6, and I like to cross it out, then I know that I've used it. So for the 28, 6 and 34. Seven twos, these are hundreds now. Seven twos are 14 and my extra three, 17. The reason, I don't bother crossing it out when, when I'm working with addition or subtraction because I'm carrying, a lot of people like to put it up there, like to put it down there simply because I don't lose it up the top there. I tend to, it, it tends to get a bit muddled with the previous question if you put it up the top. At least if you've got it down the bottom, you know where it is. You don't lose your numbers. Uh, but here with multiply, it's a little bit messy, particularly if we're going with, uh, let's go with 67. So we've done that. Now we're going to multiply by the 6 is actually six tens. 
How do we multiply by a 10? Add a zero. Sorry? Add a zero. Add a zero. I was hoping somebody would say that. Okay, add a zero. So if I'm going to add a zero onto 5 and I multiply it by 10, what have I done? I've added a zero to 5. What have I got? I'm, make, I'm getting somewhere with this. I, I like that answer. There's another answer that the students give. Well, they'll say, put a zero on the end. That's how I multiply 5 by 10. I put a zero on the end. And I'll say, okay, here's my place value. That happens to be 5 once, isn't it? I multiply it by 10. I put a zero on the end. What have I done? Not a thing. So we all know that that's what we do. We all know that that's what we say. But I then try to say to them, all right, what are we... That's how it turns out. We put a zero on the end, or we add a zero. But what we are in fact doing is putting a zero in the ones, and everything moves along one place. Same as if you all stood up and moved away, and I sat in your seat, you're going to have to move along one, aren't you? Sorry, I'm picking on you a bit this afternoon. <laughs> what you get for sitting in the front row? Okay, so if you put a zero in the ones place, everything has to move along one place. If we're multiplying by 100, we've got two zeros, so we've got a zero in the ones, a zero in the tens, and then everything moves along two places. Now, we all say, and I accept it from my class, add a zero, put a zero on the end, but we've been through this process and they know, and I'll sometimes say, well, okay, but what are we really doing? What does that mean? Well, it means putting a zero in the ones place and then everything moves along. So. That's what I'm doing. I put my zero in the ones place. Now I've multiplied by the ten. I can now multiply by the six. Six nines are fifty-four. See what I mean about needing to cross out the well carrying numbers ones. And the other thing about it is I'm multiplying by six tens. Where does my four go? In the tens place. Because I'm actually multiplying by six tens. I've already dealt with the ones. And so now my four goes in the tens place because I'm multiplying by six tens. Six fours are twenty-four and five is twenty-nine. Six twos are eighteen. No, it's not. Twelve. Six twos are twelve, aren't they? <laughs> and two are fourteen. Alright? Now, because it was sixty plus seven that I was multiplying by, remember back to the old mental strategy, multiply, multiply then, add going to add those two together. 9 and 7 are 16, 4 and 5, uh, six. 4, 5, 6, and 1. I'm glad somebody's awake. Okay. Is that clear as mud? Good. Um, who asked the question? Does that solve whatever the question was? Okay. Very quickly. <laughs> Save that, put it. We've just taught the, the form of the division algorithm in Which year three. That it's very simple. But they are doing both addition and subtraction algorithms by the time they get to year three, so they probably do need to. And you're doing long division when you put the numbers underneath there as well? Um, you do eventually, but not in year three. I don't even like doing that form for dividing by a single digit number. Oh, because you don't need it. So that's, I'm sharing eight amongst seven people. So division is basically sharing. So I'm sharing eight amongst seven people. How many can they each get? One and a They bit. can each get one. So if I give seven people one, that means I've given away seven. So I started with eight. How many have I got left? One. 
Okay, so I'm going to put my one there. Now we can go through the performance that was 800, so now I'm going to make that 113, whatever, or 130, 10s I mean, or 13 whatevers, but we are still to 